Welcome, in this video, we are going to implement the great paper Human Level Control through Deep Reinforcement Learning. So that's a paper that was published in 2015 by DeepMind. Uh, basically, they published the Deacon algorithm with a few improvements with respect to the, uh, to the paper they already published in 2013. So in 2013, they released the Deacon algorithm, uh, but then two years later, they made some improvement on the uh, published a new paper in Nature. Uh, one of the uh, big changes between 2013 and 2015 is the uh, target network. So we're going to implement that. We're going to implement this paper. These are results we'll get on breakout. So maybe we can wait a bit and see this video. So this the result you should get by the end of this video. So after training, this is uh, our agent. Um, yeah, you will see that it's really destroying the game of breakout getting very really good. Uh, it, it has learned to the tunnels, to the bricks on sending the ball over there. It uh, gets better than a human playing at this game. Um, we already implemented the Deacon algorithm a few weeks ago. Uh, I invite you to have a look at this video if you've not already seen it. Uh, and if you compare the results we got uh, two weeks ago, and by the way, results were already pretty nice, but you can see that the average reward per episode, it's almost twice uh, higher than from the previous video. So by implementing uh, a few improvements from this paper, we get uh, much better results on, uh, yeah. So let's dive in the code. As usual, we're going to use uh, PyTorch for implementing uh, everything related to machine learning. And we can start by implementing the DQN neural network. Uh, basically, we already did that uh, last week, so I will not uh, uh, go a lot into the details. Uh, I think this architecture is a bit different from the one from the, um, uh, from the preview from last week. So I think that's also one of the improvements they made. They made so some uh, changes to the architecture. Uh, but yeah, basically a neural network that outputs the Q value for each action. Um, yeah, on the four, yeah, for, given, uh, for each action, you can get the Q value. Uh, for the fourth function, we assume that we receive an image that is a grayscale image with values going from zero to 255. And therefore we uh, scale the images between zero and one. Now we can directly dive into what interests us the most, so the DQN algorithm. Uh, most of the hyperparameter are the same as last week. Uh, the big difference now is that uh, with these C parameters, so basically that's the update frequency of the target network. Uh, maybe we're going to come back to that later. Okay, let's just keep in mind that there is this hyperparameter C. So here I'm going to stick uh, I'm going to follow the pseudocode from the paper very closely. So for example, the first step is to initialize the replay buffer. Again, the role of the replay buffer is to decorrelate uh, samples because in machine learning, we assume that samples are IID. We assume that they are independent, which is not the case in uh, reinforcement learning. Samples are heavily correlated and the replay buffer allows to uh, solve that. Uh, that was a very fast explanation. If you want more detail, I invite you to have a look at the, uh, at the video, video from a few weeks ago, the video where we implemented the DQN algorithm from scratch. Or if you want, I also have a course uh, about reinforcement learning, uh, a deep course, uh, a, a few hours long, uh, more than 10 hours, uh, almost or almost 10 hours. Uh, so you, you might want to have a look at the, uh, at the link in the description. Uh, okay. So once we've initialized the replay buffer, we can initialize our, re, uh, our neural network, our DQN neural network. So that's the neural network that will represent the value function. Uh, and then we can also initialize the target network. So it has the exact same architecture than the Q network. And at the beginning, we, uh, we do this line, line 47, target Q network dot load state dict. So we load the state dictionary of the Q network. So what does that mean? We uh, initialize the target network to we, we make sure that the target network on the Q network have the same weights. Okay, so lastly, at the very beginning, they uh, represent the exact same function because they have the exact same weights. Okay, then we can create the optimizer. We are going to use Adam with a learning rate of one point twenty five to the power of ten minus four. Okay. We can create a few, uh, just a few, uh, a, few, a few variables for logging. Okay, we're going to log the reward so, so that we can make the plot that we saw previously. Uh, then we can iterate for a few number of epoch. So in our case, we're going to iterate by default for 30 million epoch. Okay, so while we've not reached uh, 
that amount of epoch we repeat. On what we are going to repeat, so basically uh, we are going to uh, to train, so basically to start episode. So basically we, we, we start a new game, a new episode, and we do that uh, many times until we reach the end of the uh, number of training epoch. Uh, I'm often uh, talking about games, but what is great about the way we implement this uh, algorithm it's that in some way it's agnostic to the environment. Uh, that can be a game, for example, the breakout game. That can be more complex game, for example, a soccer simulator where an agent learns to play soccer. Maybe I think at some point I will make a video about that because I think that's very important. So subscribe if it's not already done. Uh, but it it can also be something totally different. For example, the environment can be uh, about trading, right? So you trade the stock market, you do action, you receive reward. Uh, and then based on that, your agent, ca your agent can improve. Okay, so it's the, the great thing about the algorithm is that we do not implement it for a specific game. It is really uh, agnostic to that. Okay, so what we do first, we initialize the uh, the sequence S1. So basically, what is S1? It's our observation. If this is a robot on Mars, it observes the environment. It, it receives an image, and that's the observation. So we we do on the three set. We, we see what's happening and we process it. Um, the pro it's done uh, in the unf.reset. We are going to talk about that later. But here, it, those two steps can be done at once, receiving the image and then processing the image. Uh, that's unf.reset. So we reset the environment and we get that. Okay. So here, that's just specific for the breakout game of Atari games. So I'm sorry, we make a few uh, uh, we, we do a few code that is really uh, specific to the uh, breakout game. What would have been better is this code to, to create a wrapper on top of the environment so that all this would have been done in the environment. That's the proper way of doing things so that this code will not have been dependent on the Atari uh, environment. So yeah, I'm sorry for that. I tried to keep the con code concise and uh, understandable. I could have created a wrapper or called a wrapper that would have done that for you. Um, but at least here you, you, you see what's happening and this is really crucial for getting good results. Well, not, maybe not crucial, but they, they say in the paper that uh, doing that, doing a few no operation at the beginning of the episode, yielded better results. So I really wanted to highlight it because it yields better results, but you could uh, on, on the best way to do things would be to wrap that in the environment. Okay. So while we are not dead, so basically in the pseudocode, they write it like this. That's why we have this comment. So while we are not dead, so basically while the episode is not done, uh, so basically we, we iterate in the environment. If that's a game, we play the game. If that's, uh, for example, uh, trading stocks, we, we trade stock as soon as the, as long as the, uh, on, as we are not dead or as long as the episode is not finished. So with DQN, we follow an epsilon greedy approach, which means that which means that with some probability we take random action, and with uh, another probability we take the best action returned by the algorithm. So basically, this is what you see: with some probability epsilon, we take random action, and otherwise we uh, we take the, the best action returned by the neural network. So the neural network returns the Q value for each action, and therefore we want the action that gets the be uh, that gives us the best Q value. Uh, and you see that epsilon is a function, so basically uh, we interpolate uh, using the hyperparameters. Once this is done, once we've chosen the action to do, we can uh, we, we can execute the action in the environment. That's line eighty four. We receive uh, a reward. Okay, there is this reward signal. We also receive uh, observations. Okay, we uh, we do one. Uh, we do something in the real world, so the uh, environment changes. So we observe the new environment, uh, and then we also do reward clipping. Uh, again, for those kind of games, but also more generally, we don't want the rewards to uh, to explode or to have like huge rewards. So here, what they do, they, they they clip the reward. When it's greater than one, they clip it to one. When it's lower than minus one, they clip it to minus one. Uh, and one way to do that is to do, to use the np dot sign. For example, if I have 5, the sign of 5 is positive, so it will be plus 1. The sign of minus 5 is minus 1. So uh, this will, will have the same impact uh, as clipping. Okay. Uh, then what we can do, we can say uh, next state. Well, basically, we are going to use next state later. 
So we are making a copy of the observation. Okay, we observed something here, and we are creating this new variable next state. Uh, so basically, yeah, in some way, we are also following the, the pseudo code very really closely. They say set st plus one equal to st. That's what we do. Next state is called to ops dot copy. Uh, and they also ask to pre-process it, but the uh, the processing has already been done. Then we store the uh, transition in the replay buffer. So the transition consists on the state t, on the action that was taken, the reward we received, on the next state we observed. And we also need to, uh, to, to say if that was a terminal state or no. So basically if the agent lost a life or no. If we lost a life, basically that was a, in some way that's a terminal state, uh, or not otherwise it's not. In some way we are dead. We are not really dead because in the breakout game you can have many lives but we say every time we lose a life we are dead uh, again this it would have been better to embedded or to wrap uh, line 85 in the environment or not to do it in this uh, in this code okay so what we do we do not start training directly we only uh, start training after a few training iteration that's to make sure that there are enough data points in the replay buffer otherwise again uh, at the beginning of training some parts will be heavily, heavily correlated, which is uh, to uh, avoid when we do machine learning, when we do gradient descent. On what we do also, we only uh, uh, update uh, the, uh, the neural network every x epoch, update frequency. Again, I will not spend too much time on that. It was explained on the uh, previous video about DQN. So then what we do, we sample a batch of data point from the replay buffer and we uh, compute the uh, well basically we do supervised learning we have an input we also have uh, we should also have uh, an expected output so here the big difference with dqn is that to compute the uh, the expected output we are using the target network instead of the uh, q network so basically here we compute yj so the expected output so basically that's the uh, bellman equation but using the target network or not the q network so that's the expected output yj we also compute the current uh, value, so the current prediction, current Q value, and then we take the loss between them. Um, so yeah, again, that's uh, really like standard supervised learning. You have your prediction, you have the expected value, you take the loss between them. On here, we take, uh, in the paper, they say the MSC loss, but in practice, we use the Uber loss, which yields better results. Okay, and then we can do an optimizer step. So we can backward this loss that we've uh, computed, uh, compute the gradients and update the weights of the neural network. Okay, and then just some logging. So every 50,000 epoch, we, uh, we plot the smooth rewards. Okay, that was also explained a bit, a bit more in the previous video. Okay, and then let's co uh, here come back this hyperparameter C. So with this code, with the optimizer.step, we update the Q network, but the target network is never updated, right? Because computing this YJ value, we want it to, to be used as the expected output, so as the target. So we do we compute this target YJ in a torch.nograd to make sure that in the backward function, we will not compute gradients for the target Q network. So that's the expected behavior, but that means that by doing that, the weight of the target Q network will never be updated. So therefore, what we do, every C iteration, in that case, every uh, 10,000 iteration by default, then we set back, basically we set the weights of the target network to be equal to the weights of the Q network. So the Q network is updated every, uh, every epoch, and then every C iteration, we say, okay, the Q network should be equal to the Q, uh, the target Q network should be equal to the Q network. And that's how we update the target network. Okay, and then we can just uh, yeah, update the progress bar and then uh, do a bit of logging for uh, plotting the, uh, the smooth rewards. Uh, okay, on here, uh, one last step that could be, uh, it depends what you want to do. Uh, might, might not be necessary. It really depends on your application. But uh, if you want to get checkpoints uh, and if you don't want just the last, the latest checkpoint, you know, basically every time we get uh, an episode, Basically, every time an episode got better, we, we got further, we got better rewards with that episode than previously, we save the model. Okay, that's our current best model. And finally, we're done. We can put everything together. 
So here we uh, create our environment, the breakout environment. We create, we add a, a few wrapper on top of the environment for processing uh, the data. So for example, if I do environment.reset after line 142, I will get some RGB uh, images. But by doing that, for example, uh, we are re reshaping the image, resizing it, cropping it, transform transforming it to grayscale. Uh, again, all that was explained in the previous video. But basically, all this is some uh, wrapper on top of the environment to do the processing. What we could do to make this code much better is, um, yeah, is line uh, line 65, 66 to create an extra wrapper for that. And actually, there is one. You could have a look at the stable baseline uh, wrappers. You will see that there are some wrappers to do that. And we could, we could also do that for the uh, np.sign we could also do it, okay? Or on also line uh, 85. So all this, we could add that in our, our wrapper so that for now our code is like 90% uh, agnostic to the environment, but not quite yet. If we do this ex those extra steps and create those extra wrappers or use extra wrappers from other libraries, we will have a code uh, that is 100% agnostic to the environment. Okay, I hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, if it is, please leave a thumbs up. It's really helpful. Comment this video. Uh, subscribe for more content related to reinforcement learning and to machine learning.